Shannon Lee, and I'm the president of the Bruce Lee Foundation, and Bruce Lee was my dad. Um, I'm here to tell you a little bit about the Bruce Lee Foundation. We're a California nonprofit public charity, and we seek to preserve and perpetuate the legacy of Bruce Lee for generations to come. That legacy is a really well-rounded well legacy, not just a martial arts or an action film legacy. And we want everybody to know about Bruce Lee's life example and what he stood for, what he did in his life, so that it can inspire everyone throughout the world. Um, here at the Bruce Lee Foundation, we not only preserve his martial art of Jeet Kune Do, which we call Jun Fan Jeet Kune Do, and we also have a lot of other things that we do. We have an educational arm of our organization where we have uh, college scholarships, and the applications are available online. Uh, we just launched our website, www.brisleyfoundation.org, O-R-G, and you can get those scholarship applications online. We're also in the middle of developing some really great educational programs that will go out to schools and introduce Bruce Lee to new generations of kids so they can hear his inspiring story and what he did in his life and use that as an example of a way to really pursue their dreams and their passions. We also are trying to put together um, the Bruce Lee Museum. We're really excited about this project. It'll probably be a little bit of a long-term project, but what we envision is a home for Bruce Lee, where people can come and get to know him and who he was and see all the great memorabilia, not just from the movies and everything, which is so exciting, but also get to see the man, the philosopher, the educator, and uh, get to know the human being. You know, Bruce Lee said, under the sky, under the heavens, there's but one family. And we really try to promote that worldview here at the Bruce Lee Foundation because it's really true. Um, you know, Bruce Lee is such a great example of uh, somebody who had nothing and did everything, you know? He arrived in America when he was 18 years old with $100 in his pocket. He got his GED to graduate from high school. He enrolled in the University of Washington. He studied philosophy. In his lifetime, he opened three schools. You know, he was Cato on the Green Hornet. He did all those movies, and he became a legend, all by the age of 32. And the lasting impact that he has had has been phenomenal. And you know why? Because he was self-confident, he, he persevered, and he just always believed in himself. He believed in his dream, and he knew that putting himself out there as a total and complete person and what he believed in was what was going to take him where he needed to be. And you know, the martial arts, he always said that everything that he's learned in life, he's learned through his practice of the martial arts. I'm sure you've heard people say a lot, you know, um, the reason you study martial arts is so that you don't have to fight. Well, what does that mean? I'll, I'll tell you what that means. It means that it gives you self-confidence. It means that you know within yourself your own strength, and you don't have to use that to, uh, you know, put down other people. You just use that to inspire yourself, make yourself strong. You know, one of the things we do is we go to various festivals throughout the year, and we have a booth, and we sell some great merchandise, but one of the great things we do is we put up Bruce Lee exhibit. And we're working right now on a permanent traveling exhibit to get the word out there about our Bruce Lee Museum project that we, that we hope to uh, build someday. And we're standing right now in one of the Bruce Lee exhibits at a festival, and um, there are lots of great things here. You know, the Bruce Lee exhibits are a really great chance to come and see some of the original artifacts, some of the things that um, my dad did and, and had. And for instance, we're standing right now in front of his original um, certificates that he gave out to his students in his schools. And you can see the original printing plates that he made those certificates with. There are lots of great photos, um, lots of really interesting things uh, here to see, such as um, some great vintage magazine covers, the original Cato mask from the Green Hornet, which is always fun. And um, we have training equipment, such as some nunchucks, punching bags that he used to use to strengthen his hands. In fact, there's a great picture over here. You can see his knuckles are so <laughs> big and tough from uh, training on bags like this all the time. Um, we have some original clothing items, the Gung Fu jacket, his Gung Fu exhibition robe. Um, this is really great over here. These are the pants that he wore in Enter the Dragon during that famous scene. First one being, uh, with the 
finger pointing well, to the moon uh, and uh, all of that. So it's a terrific um, chance to see some original clothing and artifacts from the films. This is um, the picture I was telling you about with the knuckles. If you take a look at the, his knuckles on his hand, he definitely had some uh, punching power. <laughs> um, there are his reading glasses down there. You know, my dad also um, gave to charities. This picture and this check actually represent um, when he did a fundraiser for Operation Relief in Hong Kong for the victims of the typhoon and he, his personal donation of $10,000 to that. And he was on there with my mom and my brother uh, demonstrating and raising money for, um, for charity. And so he really believed in helping other people. And um, this is kind of an interesting piece. This, this tombstone is something that he had made. Um, it says, in memory of a once fluid man crammed and distorted by the classical mess. You know, uh, my father, while he appreciated all forms of martial arts, he believed that the different styles of martial arts actually helped to segregate people instead of bring people together. So when he talks about the classical mess, he means sort of the classical traditional style of separating people by, oh, he's a karate guy, he's a this guy, instead of just saying, you know, we're all human beings and we're all fluid, we all have two arms, two legs, we all can, you know, move and defend ourselves in the same way, and we should all respect one another. So he really believed in uh, not categorizing uh, yourself that way, and being really fluid in in your throughout your life in many different respects. Um, here we have some more training equipment. Um, we have his headgear that he used for sparring and boxing, and his grip machine, and his eye throat jabbing apparatus. <laughs> And uh, some great pictures. This is really interesting over here. This uh, document right here is called uh, My Definite Chief Aim, wherein he says, you know, I, Bruce Lee, will be the first highest paid Oriental superstar in the United States. And in return, I will give the most exciting performances and render the best of quality in the capacity of an actor. And he talks about how he's going to make lots of money and be super famous. And this was written in 1969. So this was before he made his movies. You know, he set it out for himself. This is what I'm going to do, and I know I can do it. And you know what? He did. So stick to your dreams, and you can achieve anything. We have um, some Enter the Dragon comic books they used to promote the movie, some Kato playing cards, some fun uh, comic booky sort of memorabilia type things. And this last case here that we have at our exhibit is um, some correspondences that Warner Brothers gave us. There's some great letters in here that uh, my dad wrote to Ted Ashley, the head of the studio, and inter-office me memos. And they all talk about how they really think Bruce Lee is going to be this international superstar. And um, how Bruce Lee thought that also. So. You know, I can't reiterate enough that if you're self-confident, if you persevere, if you believe in yourself, you can achieve anything. But it takes a lot of hard work, so don't give up.